Hey everybody, how you doing out there on YouTube? This is CJ here. Man, it's been a long time since I've been able to do a video like this. Um, due to everything with the pandemic and everything just going absolutely crazy, I have just have not had the time. Um, but it's finally great now to get some time to do these uh, next lot of videos for you here on YouTube. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to tell you when my next YouTube video is going to be. I'm just going to say... One will be with you when I can. <laughs> so, but I am going to do a few over this course over the course of this week because I'm going to be showing my Elvis DVD collection. Before I do, I just want to give uh, a mention to everyone. There's too many to list, so everybody, all my subscribers, all my uh, friends who I've become friends with, hi to every one of you. I hope you're all well, uh, especially within this pandemic. Um, I am going to give two mentions, one to Rossi73, a good friend of mine, we've become really close and um, he has kindly sent me a massive bundle of records and because um, I'm now finally collecting vinyl again so I'm I'm not going to have what I once did have as in first pressings, um, I, I, I have got a few luckily and um, I've been managed to get all of a few others as well so I'll do a video on that further down the line so Rossi thank you so much my brother for those um, also the second mention I'm going to give is a guy who is a little kid named uh, I can't remember his name so please forgive me but his YouTube name is Elvis Presley Records and his icon is with Sun Records uh, Sun Records uh, icon so check him out he's from Australia he, I think he's an absolute amazing kid. I really do. I think he's an absolutely amazing kid. His knowledge on Elvis is absolutely astonishing. Um, it's great to see younger, the younger generation getting into Elvis and studying him and doing the YouTube videos. Um, and then the, I know that there was a little inspiration from myself uh, with how he does his videos, with showing you the, the inside of the covers and so forth and everything. Mate, I tell you what, I loved your last uh, video that I saw, which was with you wearing the Loving You um, uh, t-shirt, uh, shirt, sorry. The Loving You shirt from Lansky Brothers. Absolutely fantastic, mate. So I'll look forward to your next videos. Okay, so... Um, First of all, I know that during this pandemic, I know that it's been very tough on a lot of people and I know that quite a lot of people around the world have lost their lives and my thoughts go out to the families and the friends and if you've suffered with um, COVID or know anybody who's suffered with it, my thoughts are with you. But we can all stick together, pull through, be there for one another. That's what it's all about. You know, that's how we'll move forward. So, okay then. Um, before I show you the DVDs, I'm going to just explain to you a little bit about them. I'm not going to be too long. I promise. I'll try not to be. I promise that as well. Okay, so this folder here, this little pouch, this holds all of my original Elvis DVD movies. Okay? Because the reason being, I've actually copied and backed up all of my original Elvis DVD movies. The reason being is because a few a year or so ago, somebody said to me a couple of years ago actually, somebody said to me that Elvis's movies on DVD was uh, becoming rare to get and harder to get hold of. So I collect. I never really went for box sets and so forth. I just collected them as they came out on DVD, and. Um, that was that. So when I finally got them all, I decided that was it. I'll back them up and copy them. Now, something else I did, and I am going to give another mention to a particular guy who, in my last video when I was showing the VHS tapes, I explained that there were some covers that I needed to, to get hold of uh, VHSs because I hated the DVD. I, I didn't hate them. That's a strong word, hate, isn't it? I just didn't like, I wasn't keen on the DVD covers that they were produced in when they got released. Um, because nothing stood out for me, nothing caught my eye, nothing attracted me to them, you know? I mean, they were nice, don't get me wrong. Um, maybe it's just me being over fussy. But, I mean, that's like, whoops. Excuse me. Just dropped it there. Um, this is the original um, 
DVD cover for Love Me Tender. I know they uh, brought out so many different DVD covers, but that, that was the cover I had, and then use my cover for Loving You, and j Louse Rock, and so forth and so forth. You get the picture, don't you? All right, I think you get the idea. Okay. So yeah, you get the idea. Um, I keep these in a folder. And I bet you're thinking, well, you've backed up your DVDs, you keep your originals in a pouch. How do you know which is which? Are they handwritten on? Are they simply printed on? Well, when I was growing up, for me, it was VHS tapes. I loved my VHS collections. I had various um, versions of the VHSs, uh, of the movies, um, over the years, mainly because I'd play them and play them and play them and play them, and the tape would get worn out, or the tape would get stuck, and they would snap to, uh, in the video machine. But, as a kid, growing up, my Elvis collection, as I've said in my other videos, it was my pride and joy. It still is. Um, but I used to love covers like a lower from a Y cover, for instance, a One Night With You cover, you know, the VHS covers. Because they used to grab me, they used to have that, you know, when I'd buy a VHS for the first time, or when I got given one for the first time, I would think, oh my god, this is absolutely amazing. I finally got this on VHS, you know. And that's what it was for me growing up. And that's, again, just out of personal preference. So, um... What I uh, did was, I mean, these are original VHS covers that I've uh, accumulated and collected. But there was a YouTuber who commented on my VHS video, uh, YouTube video, when I was showing my VHS collection. And he, he, we got in touch via email, and he only lives about 45 minutes away from me, if that. And we are going to sort of meet up after all this COVID is over with. He's a nice guy. And on YouTube, his name is Mark Slade. He kindly um, added his VHS tapes out of the attic or the loft. And um, he scanned in high res Lucian colours of what ones I needed and kindly sent them to me via email. I decided to do this with my entire movie collection. And thanks to Mark Slade, thanks to also Rossi, because in my last video where I was showing, I showed you the commemorative collection by Warner Brothers that he uh, sent me as a gift. Thanks to, uh, between Rossi and Mark, and um, some of my own little creations, I have managed to get my movie collection, my direct movie collection, exactly how I had it when I was a kid growing up on VHS. So when I look at my shelf now, it's like, I'm going to watch you, I'm going to watch you, I'm going to watch you. Do you know what I mean? The attraction's there. Because the artwork is a big part of it for me, you know? I know it may just me being fussy. Maybe some of you will think, that's a bit silly, isn't it? But, hey, it's personal preference. And as I always say, keep the comments positive. If you're going to leave a negative comment, you will the, the comment will be removed and you will be blocked. Okay? So, I'm going to now... Stop talking for a bit, and I'm going to show you my Elvis DVD collection. So, here is Love Me Tender. It's the VHS cover I had. And I had various, as I said, over the years, um, I used to have to replace my VHS tapes. So some I would get given by my father, some I would replace uh, by finding them in charity shops and video shops and so forth. And some um, I had given me by friends. As you can tell with the discs, I try to print on the DVDs uh, directly with inkjet discs and try to do like, similarities to match from the cover, okay? So that's Love Me Tender, originally in black and white. Now this movie um, was originally called The Reno Brothers, or originally going to be called The Reno Brothers. And because of Elvis's hit song out at the time, it got changed to Love Me Tender. A great cast in this, great movie, and it was Elvis's first debut, his debut movie. But before this, he done as we know the color screen test. But then he also done then a screen test for um, Burt Lancaster's The Rainmaker, 
and you can find photographs of that uh, screen test online and if you watch the documentary Elvis in Hollywood um, you'll be able to um, hear the story about how uh, he came to have the screen test for the Rainmaker didn't work out he didn't do it so Love Me Tender become his first movie so that's the original black and white movie but now I'm going to show it to you again but this time there's a reason for it okay here's Love Me Tender again now this cover I pulled offline because I thought it was pretty cool okay okay but if you have a look see what it says there it says it's letterbox it's actually widescreen funny enough it's not actually letterbox I don't know why I put that there but it's in colour yes this is the colourised version of Love Me Tender now within my DVD collection um, there are a few DVDs this is one of them I didn't know whether to put it after the original version or because I want them in order you see the best possible order I can I can think of um, um, but because this was done after he passed away um, in colour I don't know whether to put it in where, where it got put you know in, in your order so but at the moment it's it's after in sequencing with the movies so this originally got released in Japan with um, subtitles on and it was only released on VCD and then I believe there was a uh, bootleg VHS going around with it as well again with subtitles on and I have recently found out that in, that in Canada only um, last funny enough last night to be exact I found out that in Canada they did broadcast this in color without subtitles and it wasn't cropped or anything so I'm hoping I'm gonna do some digging I'm gonna try my hardest to see if I can find a copy of it without the subtitles and in full screen because I cut the subtitles out from this one and it some people say it cuts out a lot it doesn't cut out a significant amount because I mean I put letterbox because I'd done the cover before I actually done the disc so I thought it would maybe cut a lot out of the way you wouldn't really be able to watch it tidy but it's actually quite enjoyable still to watch so that's Love Me Tender in colour and then is second movie and his first official colour movie is Loving You now this is the VHS cover I, I had uh, I did have a red one as well when I was younger but this was like the last one that I, that I bought now I know it was released on DVD in a slimline case with this cover but this isn't quite what it seems you see this part here is from the the DVD cover which I pulled this year I created myself I done the color in the background and I re you know done the Elvis um, I retyped out all of this as well um, same with the spine I retyped that out done at the top bottom the DVD logo again with that um, I retyped out the the copyrights and I sectioned all of these bits together and the back is directly copied and pasted from the slimline DVD case now I know you again um, it might be a little fussy but I had to do it I I know it's available on VHS but I couldn't find the VHS cover in uh, good quality and it was one of the ones I that I couldn't have um, so I found the original DVD cover and I just got a close-up of the back close-up of the front and that's how I compiled it together and then there's the DVD so see the, the two colors entwine kind of like the, the cover <laughs> now interesting about this is during this movie at the end you will notice uh, Elvis jump off the stage and Elvis's mother and father was in the audience the sad thing about this is um, after his mother died Elvis never put this movie out to watch you know for anybody or himself again because he never really liked watching himself on screen um, he didn't like watching his own movies but he did occasionally pop them out 
um, the, the early movies anyway, and some of his just some of his select favourites. But this one never came out again after his mother died, which is quite sad. But again, you can understand. So, and then um, then we come in then to his third movie, which is a Jailhouse Rock. Alright, so this again, this cover comes from the commemorative collection, the Warner Brothers version, because the commemorative collection came out a few times, uh, one by MGM, and then the MGM re reissued it again, and then Warner Brothers brought out their version. Now, when Warner Brothers put it out, they actually didn't include all of the other uh, movies. There was some cut out. So that's Jailhouse House Rock. As you notice, I did the, the commemorative collection has a silver strip along the um, on the top with like a little design on it. I didn't do that for the DVD covers, so it's my jealous rock. Again, you know, the disc is somewhat to do with the cover, uh, the color scheme, and everything. All right. I'm sorry about any of the glares or the reflections you see in yours because of the obviously the plastic and the light. So I do apologize. Um. Now I'm going to show you JLo Rock again, but again, I think you probably guessed this one. This is the Australian uh, VHS release, um, by their version of the commemorative collection, in um, when it was released in Australia. Because again, look, see, it's colorized. Yes, it's uh, this one's in color. Now what we hear in the UK when they released this uh, on VHS in color. We had, uh, it was a double box set collection. You had uh, The Lost Performances and Jailhouse Rock in colour. And you had a couple of um, pictures with it and um, a certificate. But I uh, I wanted it separately, so I bought the, the Australian VHS and done the cover. So, Jailhouse Rock in colour. And they've actually done it pretty good. A lot of people don't really like it. I mean, they did get some of the colours wrong, but I think... For what they were doing at the time, I think it was I think it was pretty cool, you know. I mean Love Me Tender I think is better in colour. I think they got the colours more accurate. Excuse me while I take a drink. Elvis cup. Oh, nice cup of tea there. So yeah, that's JLO Rock in colour. Now I'm gonna try and get through these as much as I can. So I'm gonna try and get the the more information I remember about the movies as I possibly can. There may be things I miss out or forget as I'm going along. Okay, so please um, please bear with me. Okay, so next one is King Creole, and over here in the UK, this was the Channel Five um, video. <laughs> Yeah. Again, I I had them all. Uh, you know, like I said, um, my main collection I'd grown up got destroyed. The last VHSs that I had and the last things I did have of my own got destroyed with my collection, along with my CDs, records, and so forth, which I explained in the first video when I showed my CD collection. I explained about that. Um, but the last going off, these are like what I had in cover wise. So. Skin Creole. I'm still replacing videos now and um, still trying to find stuff that I had. Okay. GI Blues. This was the last cover. That. This is a reissue. Um, originally, these came out as the best of Elvis collection in the Brave World series. And this is still by Brave World, but it got reissued in the f uh, forefront video. But again, these were the last uh, videos that I had in my collection so you know getting these covers again and you know when I first done them and I looked at each one of them when I when I did them I was just really blown away and again the attraction was there I, I remember as a kid having them and collecting them so yeah they they actually got done as the best of Elvis collection I'm just gonna I don't have Jeb Blues well, I got King Creole King Creole was done in the best of Elvis collection that's the VHS cover here. Now these VHS covers that I have out in the folder, uh, they're ones that I just bought recently off eBay. 
So, uh, the next one then is a Flaming Star. And this was actually part of a collection uh, with Love Me Tender and uh, Flaming Star while in the country. Just like the, the DVD collection that they brought out with this kind of cover. And I think another cover got issued as well, but these are what I had on VHS. Again, I had different variations. Really good movie, uh, this is. This is actually my mother's favourite movie. And uh, he only sings one song in here, which is uh, Kane and a High Scar Scholar. Um, really good movie, really good song as well. Hi ho, do si do si, single and slave a dollar. Come Saturday night with a coach, there's a guy named Kane and a High Scar Scholar. Do 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 do. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, this is Wild in the Country. This is a very underrated movie. You know, Elvis really wanted to do movies where he, where he could show that he could really act. And I got to be honest with you, this is, a, I, in my opinion, a very strong movie. Kind of like King Creole, because King Creole, um, see, I said that I'd forget things. King Creole was originally done for James Dean, but due to him passing away, everything was rewritten and uh, Elvis took the part. See, I told you I'd forget. Again, this movie, Wild in the Country, I think this is still as strong as um, King Creole because of how he is in it. I mean, it's a really strong character. And it's about his character in you. I mean, if you think about how Greg is, um, it's kind of like a real-life scenario. There are people like this in real life, you know, that have these kind of problems that... Uh, not Greg, Glenn, sorry. That uh, Glenn has, do you know what I mean? So... It really touches a story too, really true. So, yeah, that's uh, Wild in the Country. And uh, here's one of Elvis's uh, other favourite movies, and uh, certainly one of mine when I was a kid. This is Blue Hawaii. Now, again, this is what I call Frankenstein Skeleton Did Together. Um, I couldn't find the VHS cover for this, so I found uh, a high res picture of the back and front. And I replicated it, scanned it in, replicated it, what have you, and done the spine myself. So I was still able to do it. I'm sorry that the light just changes because it's really, it's really dull outside here. Um, quite groggy. So that's Blue Hawaii. Okay, now this movie. I didn't change the cover to because growing up, like I said, I had the videotapes, but I also had the double feature VHS tapes as well. And these two next movies, this came as one of the double features, but then again, like I said, they did all my videos, you know, worn out, got destroyed, I replaced them and so forth. Um, this was one of the last ones that I had in the commemorative collection via MGM. This was uh, Follow That Dream. And this is the Region 2 version. And the cover was the same as the um, VHS um, for the commemorative collection under the MGM. So I decided to um, not do anything with this cover. Keep the cover and also just again with my backup DVD. I don't know how well you can see this, but the Elvis Presley is black and pink, and the Fall That Dream is black and red with like an outline. So I'm going to try and show that as close as I can. Um, I'm not sure how well that's going to show. So yeah, that's that. Um, there's something else I was going to say about this as well. I can't remember. It's gone from me now. So yeah, that's um, Fall of That Dream. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to say. The double feature of this. Actually, it was like a white sort of silhouette sort of cover with this picture with him leaning against something and then the Kid Galahad thing then in the right corner. So that's that. And here is the other uh, movie that came with a double feature is Kid Galahad. And again, this is the, the last VHS cover that I had in the MGM version of the commemorative collection. So again, I didn't do anything with this cover. This is the original DVD cover in here. Uh, obviously just a backup of the, the DVD. Alright. There we go. 
and <coughs> boy when I was younger I tell you what I had a lot of girls <laughs> girls and more girls <laughs> yes girls 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 uh, again last VHS cover that I had I had so many of these different colours. I, I know it seems dark and it is a little dark but it's okay. It's fine. I can still read all the copyrights and the information. And there's my disc for that. So that's girls, girls, girls. A uh, little funny note that I noticed in here and a few other movies as well. When Elvis walks out of the, uh, the club at the beginning in the background, if you notice, there is a advertisement for a blue Hawaii. <laughs> so, I always found that quite odd. <clears throat> um, yeah, that's the other thing as well in GI Blues. Funny enough, see, again, I'm forgetting things. Uh, GI Blues, in, when he's in the uh, pub at the beginning, and he just he's doing the song, uh, doing the best I can, and the guy puts uh, the jukebox on and he you see the name Elvis Presley because he re-recorded Blue Spade Shoes for the movie so <laughs> that's quite funny anyway this next one I used to have the double feature for for a very long time um, which is it happened at the World's Fair now it happened at the World's Fair it was a double feature with Harem Holiday as it's known in the UK well actually no it's, it's mainly known now as Harem Scarum because when they did all the DVD releases they put them as the um, the original titles. Um, it was. I had the double feature for quite quite a long time, many 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 years. I only replaced it once, and when I replaced it, I ended up buying this. And I was disappointed when the double feature actually uh, got damaged because I couldn't find Harem Holiday for quite some time. It took me a few years to find it. I eventually got it. That's my. But then, yeah, I got the, this is the original separate uh, UK edition of, I'm, I'm trying to illuminate it for the light look for you to see the, the fonts and everything, but, okay, so I'm going to try my best, do that a little bit so we can get a bit lighter, so yeah, that's, um, it happened at the World's Fair, MGM. Okay, and the next one. Is Funny Acapulco, a place I've never been because I don't like flying. <laughs> so, Funny Acapulco, another great movie. I think you know, with me talking and everything now, you get the picture and you get the drift of what I do and everything. Okay, uh, Kissing Cousins. I had this as a double feature with um, Elvis on tour. And then um, then I had the VHS, which I've actually got the VHS cover here for it. Um, it is here somewhere. Right, I had the original, I got the original VHS cover. But uh, last going off, when I was a kid, because obviously, like I said, it did get damaged. Um, last going off, I had the Warner Brothers commemorative collection. And I was quite disappointed with it, because um, it, it cut out the song, Smoky Mountain Boy. I was very disappointed in that. Because on the double feature I had, it um, and the original VHS as well, it, uh, it had the song in it. But they got damaged. I... Got to replace it then in the commemorative collection, and he cut it out. I was quite disappointed, you know. It was a, it's a good song, so um, I replicated this. I'm glad that, like I say, when they released the DVDs, everything was on the DVDs, you know, all the clips. Then we come then to Viva Las Vegas. Um, this is replicated from the commemorative collection by Warner Brothers. This was actually, this is also called Love in Las Vegas as well. I believe that's the US title for the European title. Um, I think it's the US title actually. But yeah, that's originally called Love in Las Vegas, but 
famously known now all over as Weaver Las Vegas. Um, I know that there was an, a Region 1 DVD released in 1990, 1998, I believe, or 97. I think it was 98. Originally in the US when DVDs started coming out. And this was the cover they had. Um, if I do see it uh, cheap enough on eBay, I'll probably pick it up just to have the original cover. But until then, pretty cool with this artwork because it's the same. It's from the commemorative collection, so happy days on that. No, this is actually a purpley sort of color. I know, like I said, the light is a bit thin, so but it's it's a purple color. The next one is roast the boats this is a really pretty cool movie. I used to watch this a lot when I was a kid um, I love the soundtrack to it to, to it as well it, it's got some pretty good tracks hard knocks big love big heartache one track heart it was just it's just an amazing soundtrack I love it also the last soundtrack to actually hit uh, number one till 1973 I believe there's my disc clip and as I've repeated a thousand times, I've had plenty of different covers for the for that as well, but it's the last one I had. And now it is a girl happy. Again from the commemorative collection by Warner Brothers. <laughs> okay. Uh, another good movie. I used to watch that pretty often as well. I had that with a double feature, fair enough, with Girl Happy and That's The Way It Is. Okay, now there's a bit of a story for this next movie, okay? The next movie is Tickle Me. Yes, in a pink color. In a pink case. <laughs> now, this movie is one of the last, if not the last, movie to officially get released on DVD. And as you can see, the, the VHS I had when I was a kid, uh, many times I had, had the title going down the spine. The story behind this is, um, what's my DVD design for that? Castle Communications. <laughs> story behind this, not only about the movie itself, but about me with this movie. Um, Tickle Me is actually my favourite Elvis movie. I love it. I think it's different to all the others. I think it's more comical than the others. Um, since when do you see Elvis or anybody fighting ghosts and you know stuff like that? It, it, it was, it's just brilliant. Um, when uh, growing up as a kid, Tickle Me was quite hard to get hold of on VHS. Um, and when I first got hold of it and discovered it, uh, the videotape jumped. And at the time, it wasn't actually this cover. It was a gold cover on the forefront uh, video label. And um, it jumped quite a bit, and I replaced it a few times. Finally, got it replaced, and again, it, it would just jump in certain parts, and I just couldn't stop it. And it really ticked me off, you know. Excuse me. So one day, I found on Amazon. Uh, .co uk because I even bought a, a US version of it as well. At that particular time, though, I didn't have a US. Um, multi-region VHS player so that it wouldn't play tidy. Um, and the disappointing thing about that is actually that version didn't jump. So uh, the story is I found a VHS version off Amazon for £60, uh, UK pounds, UK um, pounds, and I bought it because the actual tape, not only was it an original Castle Communications uh, video release, but the actual tape was sealed. It was brand new. It, obviously, somebody had bought it when it first came out and never opened it, never played it, and decided to sell it all them years later. I had to get it. So I got it. And it was in pristine condition. It played like a charm. And, but boy, did I wear it out. And then, obviously, I bought like bootleg DVDs of it because it was, like I said, one of the last movies to actually ever get released, if not the last movie. Um, it got released originally in the in the US as part of a collection. Oh, okay, this is not the cover for it, but in this sort of collection, 
Alright, all the colours were kind of the same format type thing. And Tickle Me in the States got released in don't tell me it's got nineteen ninety three Warner Brothers. So nineteen ninety three is obviously when they got the uh the copyrights for it or whatever. But basically that's that's the original disc, you know. I'm sure it was two thousand and I think it was 2006 because I was in Orphan Avenue living then. Yeah, it was yeah 2006, around 2006. And it took, I know it took a few years, um, cause it actually um, a good few years then, for it to be released on its own DVD here in the UK. At the time, you could only get the Tickle Me as part of the Hollywood collection. And I got that along with Stay Away Joe, Charo, Live a Little, Love a Little, Live a Few that were getting released for the first time. Now, as I said, it got released. I was happy with it, over the moon with it. Couldn't believe that it got released finally on DVD. So, in years to come, um, over recent years, it got released here in the UK in a pink case with its own pink cover. Um, its own unique styling cover as well and I absolutely love that so I bought that and then I found out it got released again then afterwards with a, a book set again UK I know I know but I bought it again so I've actually got one two three versions two UK's and one American and obviously my backup on the shelf and I got a spare pink cover I actually changed the Pink Panther DVD just to have the case. I know. Nuts. I know. But there we go. You know, it's it's love, man. <laughs> love for collecting. And finally, um, I then got, we come to this movie here. Oh, sorry. Another fact about Tickle Me. All the songs for this was recorded previous to the movie being made. Um, it never had its own official soundtrack album it had a uh, two EPs that came out with the songs on but the the songs wasn't made for specifically this movie they were on previous albums uh, the reason being as well they were trying to keep costs down because they also saved the the movie company which was a uh, allied artists from going um, out of business uh, going into bankruptcy or whatever it was happening but it was um, it saved the the company save the company so here we go nice little nice little fat there okay then we come to this one harem scarum as it's now wildly wide widely known as which is also the US title and original title but here in the UK it was actually called harem holiday and I had this with um, it happened at the world's Fair's double feature and I I actually acquired recently. There's my DVD for it. Okay. Um, I actually acquired the VHS again, the original VHS in this cover. Um, and basically, I might because what I also do, you see, I digitalize. I I digitally transfer VHS tapes now to um, DVD if they've not been released on DVD for my own private collection, and I might. Even though this is a copy of the original DVD, it starts up and it comes up Harem Scarum. But I might just do a little bit, even if I just do it, I put it in the pouch, you know, just to have on, on disc, where it actually starts up and it comes up as Harem Holiday. So, what's that? Then, part of the MGM uh, version of the commemorative collection comes Frankie and Johnny. Again, I had this in two or three covers, but um, this was the last cover I had with MGM, Commemorative Collection on VHS. And um, again, the original DVD cover you know, didn't do anything for me. So that's my backup of that, my little design there. <laughs> Frankie and Johnny. Excuse me a second. 
if you can hear like a um, bit of a noise in the background, like an oval or something, it's the fan. I've got the cold air coming to me because it's absolutely scorching up here. All right, now this cover was a total skeleton, uh, Frankenstein together. This is Paradise Hawaiian Style by CBS Fox Video. Originally, th this is the um, the only version I had of this growing up as a kid. Um, I got a fond memory of this actually with me and my good friend Richard J. Um, we um, we we just sing the songs from this uh, Drums of the Island. We went out one night and he stayed at my house and uh, we just sit up watching it. This is a so this holds a good lot of memories for me. This movie does. Um, but when I was trying to get the cover for it, I couldn't find this particular cover. So what I did was, the Elvis collection came up by CBS Fox Video anyway, and I found, I think it was King Creole I found, or one of the others. Um, I took this part, the Elvis Presley and that, because I had to use the Elvis Presley um, logo type thing. How can, I, how can you see that there? I don't know if you can see it there, but there we go. Um, and then I obviously I just copied these and the, got the CBS, Fox CBS uh, logo from the internet and then I did, done the description I looked at the descriptions how they were on the other tapes and I remember mine being central anyway so I done that uh, done the copyrights, why I put a barcode on it, don't ask I'm not got a clue, out of habit I guess um, I searched then all my fonts for the closest as I could remember Paradise Hawaiian style being and I found it so yeah that's my skeleton together replica from scratch um, Paradise Hawaiian style <laughs> and the DVD <laughs> see I, I do my best I, I put a lot of work into doing the replicas I mean even the CDs, if you've seen my CD video, this is one game actually, this is Kissing Cousins. This is because I was playing it earlier on. Never had an official soundtrack album, this didn't, so when I um, came to look at CDs of how they were released over, you know, in the 80s and 90s and so forth, I just took that and thought, mm, I'll do it that way. I'll put that back later because I was listening to it. Okay, then we have. Um, here in the UK, who's known as Californian Holiday, uh, which is the UK title, but now widely known as Spin Out, which is the US title of it. So, again, from the commemorative collection by Warner Brothers. <laughs> so, I'll Spin Out. Easy come, easy go. Some good songs in here. Step right up, a little love machine. You may get lucky when you step a dream. Okay, easy come, easy go. Double Trouble. Now, I believe when the commemorative collection was actually released in Australia, the, the background colours of some of these were different. I know this one's blue, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool, but over here in the UK, that it was orange. So, so yeah, this is Double Trouble. It's a good movie, a good funny movie as well. Um, where he, um, he plays a guy named uh, Guy Lambert and Annette Day. I think it's Annette Day. Am I right? Yes, Annette Day. See, my mind's going to see. So, Annette Day, who only feature movie role so that's pretty cool to say the only movie you've ever made is with Elvis Presley that's pretty cool um, and then we have Clambake and again this is um, the, the last VHS I had was the MGM commemorative collection and this was basically the cover um, so I, again this is the original DVD cover in here I haven't changed anything or done anything with it, so because it was the same, I decided to keep it. The disc design, I actually got this disc design off the internet when I backed it up. So, clambake. 
Um, if I'm correct, is he in here? Is it in there? Is it him? Is it him? Yes, Bill Bixby. Uh, Bill Bixby, the, the guy who played the character David Banner in uh, the original Hulk series and the original Hulk movies. Um, awesome, awesome guy and good friends well with Elvis. So, Clambake. Then we have Stay Away Joe, another comical movie. I love this movie as well. Um, I love everything. I love every Elvis movie here that I've shown. I love all of them. I love all my Elvis collection. And I love everything Elvis did. Um, there are some things that you do watch or listen to more than others. You know, so that's kind of the way it is with everything, I guess. Um, the other Stay Away Joe. Again, as you can see, is from the commemorative collection by Warner Brothers. This is a great movie. I love the way that he tears all of his car, you know, his car apart, and it's just for parts, just for money and so forth. I think it's comical. It's brilliant, brilliant movie. And then we have Speedway again, another one with um, Bill, B yeah, Bill Bixby's in this one as well. Um, great song in your. I, I love the uh, actual opening song, Speedway, and I love the uh, the song Let Yourself Go. Your time hasn't come yet, baby. Holds a lot of memories for me. I used to see my children sleep with it. Um, so again, this is with the commemorative collection. Okay. Uh, also plays alongside Elvis New is Nancy Sinatra, Frank Sinatra's daughter. Pretty cool. Um, from the MGM commemorative collection. This is Live a Little, Love a Little. This this movie I had to watch once or twice to get my head around it at first. It was, uh, I was quite young when I saw it, so it was like, what? Um, a great movie all in all. Um, I really enjoy it. So this is my just sign for that. And again, I had uh, a few different variation covers for this, including the original VHS cover here in the UK. Um, but the last one I had was the commemorative. Okay, Charo. A little story with this one. When I first had you on VHS, I basically had a bootleg copy on VHS, which I show in the um, my videos, YouTube video. And over the years, then, I had the other cover. But I, I like both of them, you see, and I didn't know what to do when it came to the DVD. Excuse me, I do beg your pardon. I didn't know what to do, I didn't know how to do it, so I thought, let's see if I can mix the two together type thing and put my own little stamp on it. So I decided to change the cover from white to this colour here, like an orangey creamy type thing. And then the spine then is like my uh, bootleg VHS with the, the mini sort of... Elvis uh, on the spine there and use the back this picture is featured on the back of the, uh, the bootleg that I had and this was all the information here so I retyped out all of that again why I put the barcode I don't know but I really like it I know it's basic I know it's very simple but I liked it you know it still holds the memories for me and there's my uh, DVD <laughs> National Journal Pictures. The other thing as well about this movie is it's the only movie Elvis does not sing in. And he has a beard. Um, you hear Elvis singing on the start-up song on the opening credits, which is the title of the movie, and the song Charo. But you don't see him sing in the movie at all. It's the only movie he doesn't sing in. And again, I think this got... Um, I think, gets, I think this gets forgotten a little bit because I think it's a really good good role, a good serious role, a different kind of Elvis than what you see in the other movies. Um, you know, I, I, I just think it was it would be good if he'd done more movies like this. So, 
because Elvis hated his film career. He didn't like it at all. He did like uh, a few of his movies that he made. He enjoyed doing quite a few of them, but the, a lot of them, it, they, to Elvis, it just just became the same same script type thing. Now I'm going to show you Charo again, only this time there is a difference. This is Charo uncut, the uncut version. Now this is a VHS cover that was used in the States that I pulled offline, I replicated it for for this version. Um, what's the difference? In fact that's, that picture there was used on, that was actually the front cover of my bootleg VHS funny enough. So, why is it uncut? Here's my just design for that. Well, I'll explain. The uncut version is basically at the near the beginning when Elvis when when Jess Wade, the character that Elvis plays, goes to uh, Tracy Winter's house, the character, um, not the house, the saloon. Sorry. Uh, see, I'm just trying to remember things. The saloon, and uh, he goes looking for his gun, and you see that the cameras go to Tracy Winters, who is in the um, in the bath at the time. Now, in the cut standard DVD version that you get today, when she gets out of the bath, they go they go as she goes to go, but they they cut it, they cut it, and um, in the uncut version they don't cut it so when she gets out of the bath you see a little bit more than what was intended so um, I feel pretty cool to have this so that's Charo and cut and there's the story okay um, the trouble with girls and how to get into it uh, this is my original DVD cover because, again, the last version I had on VHS was the commemorative collection via um, uh, MGM. And, again, the cover was pretty much the same, so I kept it as it was. So I didn't uh, didn't change this. Why the co cases are colour-coordinated, please do not ask. <laughs> this is my disc for that. Okay, now is the last movie, of the official movies, movie, 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 feature movies I'm gonna, sh gonna show you. Um, this is Change of Habit, 1969, Change of Habit. A great movie, again, a little bit underrated, um, quite a serious movie as well. Um, touched a lot, actually, on um, quite a few things, which I think, with what's happening in our world now maybe people should actually watch this maybe they would learn something I'm not gonna go into it but there we go change of habit there's my disc now again I had a few uh, VHS colors of this is when I saw the DVD cover I just thought I was shocked by it because it, to me it was like more cartoony but there we go um, the I do believe however that I think it's Australia. They've actually released this on DVD with this cover. So if I ever find it cheap enough, I may just purchase it. Um, I, I don't know yet, but that's a change of habits. Good tracks in there as well, good, good songs. Okay, so that's it for my feature movies. Now I'm going to come on to a different sort of selection of DVDs, which the next few I still class as movies a lot of people don't but if you um one second oh. sorry this is a lovely book I just uh, acquired the films and if you go to the very end the last movie that is featured in here because it is classed as a movie a lot of people say no it's a concept no, it's it's a live DVD. It should be in the live section. No. Um, the lot, um, it goes all the way up to this movie, which I'll come to in a second. Um, they are called, because some people call it as well a documentary, and a rockumentary. They're basically movie 
documentary concerts, you know, whichever you want to call them, but they are classed as movies. It's Elvis, that's the way it is. This was absolutely epic. And this year marks the 50th anniversary of That's The Way It Is. And um, sometime in August, I am going to do a spotlight on That's The Way It Is, showing you all the, all my releases, all, all the releases that I have. I'm also going to show you some little gems as well. Um, I'm also going to be wearing that shirt there. I know you might not be able to see it clearly at the moment, but that's actually a replica of the shirt that Elvis wears during the rehearsals of this movie. Um, at the very beginning, uh, when he takes off the glasses and he goes, Good morning, Hollywood camera. Gentlemen, how are you? And also, I got the, the belt as well that he wears during rehearsals. Anyway, so I'm going to do that in August, a, a spotlight on that's the way it is. And we're going to talk a little bit about this because it entwines with a few things that's going to be coming up that I'm going to show you next. Now, this version. Uh, when they released, when when they first released it, they had it in a, a yellow box over here in the UK, a big yellow box, and um, then they had one in a pink cover, then they had one in a white cover. I actually had all of the versions. Um, the the very first version I ever had was the one in the the pink the pink box. Then I had no yellow box, sorry, because my dad had the original release, um, but he had the two of them. He had the pink box version and the um, the original yellow box version. Um, the last version I acquired on VHS was this version in the commemorative collection with MGM. So I kept my original cover, but I love this cover anyway, so regardless of it, I probably would have kept it if it wasn't the last VHS one I had. Now for many years I, um, I couldn't find this on VHS. Um, I don't know, I had my dad's but I wanted like my own type thing, you know. Um, and for many years, I actually had the double feature of Girl Happy, and that's the way it is. Anyway, in 19... In the year 2005, I was trying to find this on DVD, because they'd already brought up the special edition, and I thought, I really want the original version, the original theatrical version, and I couldn't find it. And then somebody said to me, it had been released in the US, but you'd be lucky to get it. So I scoured the internet, uh, didn't stop, scoured, and then all of a sudden, I found out that in 19... Let's have a look on here, because this tells me. Uh, okay, this one, this version came out in 98, and the first ever clip... You know the DVD covers you get, it's like a cardboard, and it's like a clip. You clip it open, and then you open up, and you've got plastic. A tray with a disc in and it clips in. Um, it came out on one of those originally, and then in 1998, for a, again another short period of time, it came out on with this cover in a case. Um, only in America, uh, in the in the U.S. and for very limited time. Um, in 1998, so in 2005 when I was looking and I found it, I paid. It was um, 60, yeah, 60 odd quid for this DVD. And I remember that the, the seller who actually had it was actually only in Western Super Me, which is now where I'm. It's only like half an hour over the bridge, really. So, um, yeah. Um, I was so, so happy when I found this on DVD. And I loved it. When I got it, I was a little weary about it because the original disc, you see, if I show you on here, it says uh, a widescreen version and standard version. Okay. Um, obviously, yeah, it's a region one. But all my DVD players were all multi-region anyway. Same as my Blu-rays. Everything is multi-region. But why I didn't like it, not the fact it was a double version of it, widescreen and you know standard screen but because of the way they've done the discs I hate these disc designs where you gotta read the um, the writing in the middle I hate them you know because again it's um, you gotta be very careful they're very fragile so um, 
I copied it and obviously this is my my design and yes it does come with a booklet I know the others came with like little flyers and so forth but they're in um, they're in the other folder so it's that but I kept this one in here yeah. <laughs> because I absolutely love it I really do So yeah, that's the way it is. Now, what I love about this is just everything about it. I just think it's phenomenal. It was the first thing when I was a kid that I saw that made me fall in love with a thin microphone, silver microphone that Elvis used, which was the Electro Voice RE15, which you will see in my Spotlight video that I will physically show you. So, and a few other gems as well. So that's, that's the way it is. Okay, now I didn't know whether to put the original DVD of That's The Way It Is Special Edition after the theatrical version. Um, or if to put it where I've put it, which is after Elvis on tour, after the Lost Performances 1992, because it came out in 2001. So... I didn't know where to. Uh, this is one of them things I said at the beginning. I didn't know where to place it. Oh, I wanna before I come off this subject. I wanna um, actually no. I'll continue with the special edition. Okay, so that's that's the way it is. So the next one that came after was Elvis on tour. When they uh, released it on DVD. They planned to release it a few times, and each time it got dropped. And then, finally then, they had an opening to release it. And a promo DVD went around a few companies, and I was lucky to get hold of a copy of the promo, which now, due to what I've, due to what I've obtained, excuse me, I've now put my promo away in my uh, little box with all my other little collectibles. But when it was finally then released, because it was it was due to get released like the Dulux editions of Low from Hawaii and the Six Day Comeback, you got the main concept, then you got the outtakes and stuff. Um, and Elvis on Tour was due to be released like that, with the main feature movie and the concerts that were done. And funny enough, that's the way it is, kind of had the same idea, but that didn't take place. Officially then, it got released on DVD in 2010. And they, what I hate about it, it I, I loved it that it was released, it was remastered, I loved the actual uh, movie itself. But what was disappointed, what was disappointing was the opening credits. Originally it was Johnny B. Good, but due to copyrights they couldn't get the rights to do it, so they changed the opening credits to um, Don't Be Cruel from Hampton Roads. So anyway, that's my... Uh, that's my cover, the original DVD cover. Um, that's the original DVD. Now, before I obtained what I'm about to show you, I originally done the. I don't have it no more. Um, well, I didn't need it after I got. Uh, after this, after I obtained this one, but I I done the uh, the commemorative collection with Warner Brothers. I uh, replicated the cover for that from Warner Brothers and done the disc. Then I inquired this beauty. Yes, before the official DVD release, there was a pressed DVD, which um, got put around and. It's kind of like, kind of like the original release type thing. I'm, we're doing it because, let's see if I can get the camera. Right, if you can see that, it like it's like a hologram type thing. Can you see it? And it goes all the way around. Tell you what, let's, see, let's take the cover out. I absolutely love this DVD. This is stunning. Right, now you might be able to see it better. This is hologramic. Okay, there we go. Look, see, Let me show you there, and it will change color. 
all the way around, including the spine. You might not be able to see the spine tidy because because of the light is so small, including the back as well. It's all hologramic. Um, I just, I, I just, it is absolutely stunning. I absolutely love it. And it's got the, the catalog number and everything and the barcode and the whole nine yards. I, I just think it's absolutely beautiful. I really do. Beautiful. <laughs> um, I had a copy of this, but then a friend of mine in the States named Justin, he had it and he sent me a picture of it and I said, oh my goodness, um, I gotta have that. So we end up doing a trade. So Justin, if you're watching this video, because I know you to follow my videos, thank you so much, buddy. I absolutely love this, I really do. This is the original version of Elvis on tour. Now, I haven't copied this DVD yet. This is still the original disc in here. See, no funny colours or purpley colour or anything. This is the original disc of Elvis on tour, 1972. And I absolutely love it. Now, with the original DVD, I got released in 2010, came this, because I ordered it from Elvis Matters, and if you ordered it from there, you had this with it. But I put it in with this, because it's on my shelf. This is the Elvis Pres... Oh, the booklet contains an exact replica of the of the tour book that was used by Elvis, uh, Elvis's musicians while on the road. Okay? So we've got that. And it opens up Oop. like that so you can see everything it shows that the the artillery and what they were going to be doing and uh, the plans of action and so forth um, I don't know how well this is coming out by the way I'm doing this blind now because I can't see in front of me <laughs> okay so you've got that it's a really interesting read so if you find a copy from Elvis Matters, you'll have this with it. So, um, that's Elvis on tour. Thank you, Justin. I'm not excited, really, I'm not. Okay, so now we come to 1992. After That's the Way It Is, and after the loss of, uh, and after Elvis on tour, Obviously, there was always rumours about outtakes from both concert movies. Um, this is what I'm going to show you. This is a films of Elvis, and Elvis on tour is the last movie after that, so it is to be spoke about. <laughs> anyway, that's for those who think it's not a movie, that it's just a live DVD. Don't want you messing around. Okay, um, so in 1992, these rumours kind of surfaced and a VHS was released called Elvis, The Lost Performances. This is the original 1992 VHS uh, cover. Now, this has never been released on DVD officially. I don't know why. I think it would be awesome for this to be released on DVD officially. There's my DVD for it. Um, this contained, um, basically, I'll just read this little bit out to you. In early, uh, early in 1986, during a routine inspection of the underground vaults at the Turner slash MGM library in Kansas, a pallet loaded with load, load cans was, and was discovered. The cans contained numerous outtakes from Elvis, that's the way it is, and Elvis on tour which have been edited together to create this superb combination. Also included in this program is a 10 minutes is 10 minutes of rehearsal footage from the Elvis That's the Way It Is concerts shot on MGM lot in 1970. A rare glimpse at the personal side of this talented entertainer. So this was absolutely awesome. I love the the opening song as well, uh, "Walk a Mile in My Shoes." You know the, the first song. 
um, I just thought it was absolutely amazing. I absolutely loved watching this as a kid growing up. I had, again, different versions of this. Um, I had the MGM one, um, which is this one, and I also had the, I did have the MGM version from the commemorative collection, but then I also had the commemorative collection version from Warner Brothers. But this was, for me, this, I, I've always loved this cover. Um, great Charlotte, if that's the way it is. So, um, actually, I was on the other side. So, again, to me, it should be released on DVD. So that's that. Then, in 2001, yes, came. That's the way it is. Special edition. Okay. Now, what can I say about this? It's got his pros and his cons. Okay? Right, this DVD was just pretty basic when I'd done this. Right. I've got to redo that DVD, actually. Okay, now... Let me get this out in a second. Okay. Theatrical version, special edition. Which one will I go for? Sorry, this one will always win the ticket. With this one, they cut out all the interviews and the people talking and um, so forth, which was okay. Uh, a documentary was on you of the reconstruction of That's The Way It Is, which is really fun to watch. They explain how they did the process and so forth, which is pretty cool. One good thing about this I like is they show the full version of the song Patch It Up, where, as in this one, the song is, is the verse cut out. Other than that, this still wins my ticket, baby. Um, it was brilliant to see the new footage that was not included in the Lost performances. And footage that we've never seen before, both during rehearsals and the concert. So yeah, it did show a more personal side, I guess, of Elvis. Whereas this one came not only with the personal side of Elvis, but uh, perspectives from other people people who owned the hotel that he was performing in, uh, fan clubs uh, throughout uh, Europe and everything. So, the other thing as well, which was a little disappointing for me about this movie, um, it's, during Poke Salad Annie, it's the same performance as the theatrical version, but they cut the beginning short, where he uh, speaks and he does the army thing, where he goes, uh, up, one, two, three, hut, 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 hut. Da, da, da. Well, anyway, they cut that part short in the special edition. Um, and they cut out songs as well. During the theatrical version, you got I Just Can't Help Believing, which is an amazing song. You got I've Lost You, Sweet Caroline, Bridge Over Troubled Waters. They cut out those songs from the concert part of this, which to me was quite disappointing. They could have used some other versions, which they have done with some of the songs in here. They've used other versions. Suspicious Minds being an example. Um, on the... Um, where I say other versions, like... On the theatrical version, Suspicious Minds, he's in the chain suit. On here, he's in the concho suit. So... Do you know what I mean? They could have used different versions. I think they've also, they also could have done a lot more with this when it comes to outtakes, because there's so many of them. The other disappointing thing is on here they got the song in the ghetto. On the lost performances in 1992, he performs "Don't Cry, Daddy" in the ghetto as one song, and in here they cut "Don't Cry, Daddy." And you, I can tell because obviously I know we was watching two of them. If you study them hard enough, you know where to look for and how to have to see where they've managed to cut the song itself. I know it's been there. They, For me, why they couldn't put Don't Cry Daddy in this with In the Ghetto, I have no idea. Probably due to rights, maybe. But I still think it was silly not including it. All, all the same, you know. I know they say about copyrights and stuff, but if they were doing that and it was all part of one song, I still think they should have been able to swing or get a deal going. So that was disappointing because it was noticeable. Um... They also done a fade in and a fade out. Throughout the whole show, when he's in his white um, suit with the chain and the con show, they showed like the audience. Then they showed back to Elvis, and he was in the um, the con show suit. 
um, then they would he would do a song or have you. Then they would show a part of the audience and they would go back to Elvis and he'd be in the chain suit. You know, when they came to doing the Wonder of You and um, in the ghetto, they done a fade out to black. Kept the uh, the sound, but they done a fade out to black and a fade back in from black to when Elvis was in his ladder suit, his red ladder, well, white with red, you know. So uh, they could have done a lot more with this. Um, cutting out those songs doesn't... Okay, yeah, I get it, makes sense. But they, they should have either replaced the performances or kept them in. Because I think they were brilliant songs, you know. Um, the other strange thing about this is if you put this special edition in and you watch the trailer, it plays the theatrical trailer for the theatrical version. And doing that theatrical trailer for the theatrical version... <laughs> Yes, I know I'm saying things. You see Elvis perform I've Lost You. You see him perform Bridge Over Troubled Waters. So, which then, when it comes on, you also see the interviews as well. So, when it comes to this and you press play, and those performances ain't in the concert part, to me, it's a bit misleading. You know, they should have at least had the special, tra special edition trailer for the special edition on this DVD release. Same with the Blu-ray as well, you know. So, um, yeah, th there's a few things wrong, but then there's a lot of things right, like the great performances that you don't see on the lost performances or the theatrical version of That's The Way It Is. The, the joking around, there's some outtakes, um, not outtakes, but footage that wasn't used in the original version. So, you know, again, there were still some great elements to this movie with, with seeing that more personal side of Elvis. So, it, it's got its pros and it's got its cons, but give me the choice of the two theatrical version wins every time. Um, okay, so now technically that should end my movie, uh, but it doesn't. I'm going to show you a DVD that I put together. Now, if you watch my um, YouTube video for my box sets that I show, um, I show a box set called The Complete Works. That's the way it is, The Complete Works. Which is a box set that contains all of the outtakes for the rehearsals. And all of the concert outtakes for That's the Way It Is. And um, I decided to take all the concerts and edit them. I've got my original uh, Complete Works box set put the concerts, load them into my computer and edit them because you've got they've got like multi screen so I edited all of those so that it's all like one screen. I looked at all the performances that were included from the theatrical version of that's the way it is. The nineteen ninety two lost performances and the two thousand and one that's the way it is special edition. And I took those out and I edited everything together so when you're watching this you wouldn't think those performances are actually there because what the Complete Works did, they put the whole concerts together everything from beginning to end the Complete Concerts so they did, it did contain you know, footage that are in all these other three releases so what I did was I edited them and I put this together The Lost Performances 27 years on because when I did this it was 27 years since the original 1992 release of The Lost Performances. And what I did was, not only did I take away the, re the concert footage for That's The Way It Is, but I also took the concert outtakes for Elvis on tour as well. Because there was a lot more concert outtakes for Elvis on tour, there's still loads that hasn't surfaced yet, but they are there because all the shows was filmed. The speculation about that, but it's also been proven too. So, um, and if people, you know, if you do your research, then you, you'll find find things out like that. Um, so I took the con I didn't take any rehearsal footage. Now I've got the rehearsal footage for Elvis on tour. I've got the, the backstage for Elvis on tour, same with That's The Way It Is, because it's all in the complete works, there's been a few releases out, 
on uh, the Star Company and different other companies as well for the on tour outtakes which I have so I just took everything and put my own version together of the lost performances and the concert outtakes I do have all the other rehearsal footage but I didn't do anything with, with those <laughs> okay so now we come to um, specials and concerts first one I'm going to show you is a double DVD that I put together simply titled Elvis Presley as you can see there the front cover is from his first album <laughs> um, there's not a lot of uh, full concert footage from the, the 50s of Elvis or the, the 60s so what I decided to do was basically accumulate everything that I possibly could from the TV shows as well like I got the complete uh, Dorsey Brothers stage show uh, VHS got that and I decided to digitally transfer that same with the Milton Milton Burl show uh, there's uh, one where he's on the, the USS uh, Ancock um, which is an eight yeah the USS Ancock and um, he performs with Mel Milton Burl and um, it's quite funny and so forth. I don't think Elvis liked it because I think it was a bit insensitive where Milton came out and said that he was uh, is a twin brother type thing which I thought was a little bit uh, a little bit selfless I guess because obviously Elvis had a twin brother who sadly passed away at birth. I mean maybe at the time Milton didn't know I suppose maybe he was all out of innocence I guess but you know um, the Steve Allen show, uh, Ed Sullivan, Tupelo Zone, and Welcome Home Elvis. Now I'm going to go back to the Middle Bird because not only have you got the one with the um, the USS Hancock, but you've got the performance as well where Elvis performed Hound Dog and I Want You, I Need You, I Love You. Now <clears throat> when he performed Hound Dog on that show is the, the one where he did the bluesy ending where he um, finished the song and then all of a sudden he went into this bluesy number going you ain't nothing but a hound dog a hound dog and he's he's doing these gyrations with his hips on national television like that and uh, it caused a lot of uh, controversy and the band didn't even know what he was gonna do uh, DJ Fontana uh, in an interview he says that uh, we, we didn't know he was gonna do that it was the first time he did it and after the performance, the, they mentioned it to him, and they said, oh, we didn't know what you were going to do. And Elvis went, ah, it's all right, you guys caught it fine. So, again, that particular performance, it goes in then to him talking to Milton Burl and then um, going into performing, I want you, I need you, I love you. Now, that whole performance has never been, so I gather anyway, I could be wrong, things could have surfaced since I've done this, but at the time, the whole complete performance was not available anyway. It didn't, uh, it wasn't there. So what I had to do was get all the footage I could and cleverly edit it to uh, all together in sequence as well, in order, so it made sense. So you got the Milton Bill show. That's everything there. Um, Steve Allen show. He comes on and he um, he sings I want you I need you I love you then he performs with a dog which to me is the most childish performance um, I've ever seen even Elvis didn't like it and he wasn't looking forward to do it either and then he did the, the country and western sort of um, sketch so you got Steve Allen then you got the Ed Sullivan the complete Ed Sullivan appearances then Two Blow Zone I took Two Blow Zone concerts uh, that he did in um, Mississippi in Two Blow and um, put that on there and I just again I ripped that directly from the disc no editing to be done then welcome home Elvis going into the 60s after he came with the army welcome home Elvis from the Frank Sinatra special that he did I got the DVD and I'd done a lot of clever editing so it only stays the strictly Elvis parts where you know you get the opening you get Elvis coming out you get him being carried away then there's a little bit of talking then you've got Elvis coming out again and then you've um, Gun gone away, then you get Frank Snart to say something that I again it's all done with clever editing. And then I also included the uh, the end credits as well. Because uh, again I just wanted it to look tidy, you know. I didn't want to just chuck the bug, there's a lot of other bootlegs that are out there. 
But this boot, uh, these are created for myself only. These are not for sale or anything like that. So yeah, this is Elvis Presley. 50s going into the 60s. Now, after that then, we've got the 68 Comeback Special. Now, this is my uh, replica VHS. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about these pr this process through the next few DVDs I'm going to be showing you. Uh, this is, was the VHS cover. I had a few covers for these. I had one for Virgin Video when I had, you know, the last going off. This was the cover I had for BMG. It came out as a collection. Okay. And it had it inside. So if I just take this disc out there. There we go. And basically, I uh, I took the US DVD release. In America, it was released as the Six Day Comeback, One Night With You, The Ultimate Aloha Concert, and Elvis Aloha from Hawaii. Um, Aloha had the red cover, The Ultimate had the white cover, the, S the One Night With You had its own picture with red going into black, and Six Day Comeback was all black, with a picture from the Six Day Comeback. Actually, in here, now I do, this was actually the very first disc that I had of it and the cover went but since then I've actually got the um, the 6 day comeback I got, I got all those DVDs in their cases because I replaced them now the American version you see it didn't include the song in a collector's note that's on the back saying that it uh, didn't include the song Are You Lonesome Tonight due to clearances now when I've read that I actually wasn't bothered because although we performed it in the special, to me, now I don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking the song, I love it, but to me that particular performance, it kind of drags on a little bit. So for it not being included, it didn't bother me at all. Um, even though it's listed on Europe, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't bother me that it's not there. Um, you wouldn't know this. You wouldn't even know that it's been edited out or anything by how they did it. You know they're very clever with the editing, and um, it also as well. What I love about it when the Dulux edition got released over here on DVD, it it was the version where the song "It Hurts Me" and the uh, the karate scene and everything that was all cut out of the Dulux edition. But when they first released it in America on DVD everything was intact apart from that one song I Lonesome Tonight so for me it's this version all the way I love it now obviously the Dulux edition got released which I do have my discs are in here there's a three disc edition DVD 1 featured the um, original airing of the six day comeback special which was originally titled Elvis by the way uh, it's gotten known as the Six Day Comeback over the years and a few other names as well. But the original title of it was Elvis. Singer presents Elvis. Um, so DVD 1 you had the special, you had the two sit down shows. And then DVD 2 then you had the two stand up shows and outtakes. Then DVD 3 then you had more outtakes. So when it came then to the sit down shows. Yes I done this. One Night With You. So this was my VHS cover for that. There's the back. <laughs> There's the spine. I'm not going to take the disc out because I've shown you how it's like, you know, with the 60 comeback, I, you know, they're all the same. So you get the drift of it, don't you? But again, like you see, the the discs have these were like the video tape stickers that were on there. So I designed it like that. Now, what I did with this was take the US DVD of, this, of the One Night With You, put it through my editing station, took out the beginning uh, write-up, which featured, I think it was George Klein presenting the um, what was being narrated on the screen, telling you about One Night With You. Then I'd done some editing, and then I took the first sit-down show from the Dulux edition, so it's complete, so yes, Are You Lonesome Tonight was in there. So edited that there, um, and then I took the second sit-down show, and I also included that. So this DVD is menued, so you can select which show you want to watch. 
Now, with One Night With You being the two sit-down shows, or this, my DVD version, my custom version being the two sit-down shows, how would I do something with stand-up shows? Well, that's where this one comes in. On VHS, when I was growing up as a kid, I had um, a video called Unguarded Moments. This was the cover that I had. It actually had another cover as well, which I do also have. Um, which I think the other cover that was available was quite misleading. I can't get, I can't, I can't find it. Never mind. I was going to show you the the other VHS cover. It, it was a picture of the six, the nineteen sixty nine shows that you did in Las Vegas. See, um, so this is replicated from the VHS cover. But the Unguarded Moments was the second sit-down show originally on video. But I loved it, loved the cover, and then I thought I'll use this. I'll read, I'll redesign everything and replicate, but I'll change the description on the back because now this Unguarded Moments DVD in my collection is the two two stand-up shows. So again, direct. Directly taken from my Dulux editions of the uh, 60 comeback. So yeah, that's the two stand-up shows. Okay, here we have the alternate Aloha concert. Bit of a story on this one as well. Okay. Um, when I first saw the rehearsal show when I was a kid, the colour of the concert and the brightness and everything it was rubbish it was absolutely rubbish completely unbalanced it, it wasn't in sequence it was going in and out of focus it was not good because officially it never actually had an official release on VHS there were a lot of cheap budget ones going around uh, as using the title Elvis in Hawaii or Elvis live in Hawaii um, Elvis Hawaii 73 and some of them had different covers, different sleeves and they, some of them really poor quality um, very um, very very bad, you know, very bad taste so um, it wasn't until 1997 that I stumbled upon something um, they had an Elvis night year over here in the UK on a channel at the time called HTV which is now ITV um, and the Elvis night was hosted by somebody I can't remember the name of the presenter but it was Jack something and it was called a date with Elvis where the show started and the presenter um, talked about Elvis and they they were showing the, the the stars in their eyes which is over here in the UK like a, like a talent sort of show on TV um, stars in their eyes Elvis Presley special the alternate, the, the alternate Aloha, Love Me Tender, and Elvis the Movie by Kurt Russell. I actually think Love Me, Love Me Tender was shown first. Yeah, Love Me Tender was first, then it was the rehearsal Aloha. Now, it was actually called something different. Even though they mean the same word, it was called the alternative Aloha concert when it was broadcast. So when this was on, I was ecstatic I was like yes you know what's the quality gonna be like and they done a little preview and I was like I can't wait to see this in you know great quality and crisp quality and something he said at the beginning before he um, before the program started he stated um, that the official VHS release was released last year that they were his words which meant the previous year which was um, 1996 so I was like, oh, was it now? Okay, so I began phoning, even though I was recording, because I used to record everything off the television, so I did have it, because um, I recorded it when it was on. And I began then the day after, because I wanted the original, without the commercials and so forth. I rang around every video shop that I knew, um, I got my dad to come, you know, take me shopping to different places, to market stores, and... Oh, I left my tea go cold. Never mind. Um, 
in di different various places, and I hunted and I hunted. But I couldn't find this videotape anyway. Um, the big stores like Virgin Megastore at the time, they did have nothing on this system. Um, we had a store over here in the UK called uh, HMV. They didn't have anything on their system. MVC as well, which was you could take a little card in and you'd get something for a couple of pounds cheaper. Um, again, they didn't have anything. Uh, a video store named R Price as well. They didn't have anything on this system. So I thought, he, he said on TV last night that it was, um, well, by this time I'd gone, it was a couple of days I'd gone looking for this. He said on the TV that it was released last year. It can't be discontinued. It can't be deleted. Um, but I couldn't find it. I could not find it. So I was stuck with this VHS pre-recorded that I'd done off the TV. And um, over the years, obviously, it just, you know, deteriorated and... You know, because I was playing it like crazy, you know. And then as I realised it was getting worn, because I couldn't find it nowhere else, and it was only ever broadcast once here in the UK. No, twice, sorry. But I missed it the second time it was on. Um, I actually thought to myself, you know, how am I going to restore this? How am I going to keep this pristine? So I actually got two VHS recorders, because we had a few VHS recorders at that time, put a scart lead from one to another and I did like a transfer, like a copy. But again, it was never the same. Um, again, that deteriorated over years. And then when I started growing up and I started using the internet and so forth, I discovered then that it was on DVD. I was like, yes, let's go for it. So, which is the one in the white cover? Um, which I will show at another time. I did show it actually in my Aloha Spotlight video. So I um, bought this white uh, cover version DVD. I didn't really care actually at the time what the cover was like. You know, it was the fact that I had it. It came and it was actually a friend of mine because I didn't use the internet as I was all young at the time. I didn't have an account. And it was from Amazon.com. Uh, so it had to be from America. And uh, they shipped over here, which was brilliant. I paid in out of my savings the money and he got it for me. It's actually a friend's father who done it. Um, it came, I watched, and at the start I noticed something a little different. Because at the beginning, you see, you get right in, come up on the screen, um, telling you a bit about the concerts, you know, as the 2001 uh, Space Odyssey is uh, rolling up, uh, building up. And um, it says, it said on the VHS that I recorded off the TV, this is that alternate concert never before released. Well, on the DVD, it said, this is that alternate concert. And I thought at the time, well, maybe they took off never before released because it had been released on VHS, it's now on DVD, so, yeah, that would be far to put in never before released. So, um, I, I just took it at that. It didn't, it didn't really bug me. Then it... Then he came out on stage, and I was I was buzzing, because I love the Aloha. You see, the Aloha concert is very sentimental to me. Both concerts are. Anyway, um, he came out, and I noticed after the one song there was a camera angle change, and I thought, right, okay. Um, cause growing up, you see, I used to study the concerts. I I used to study everything I'd watch, um, and then throughout then, and I. All of a sudden, like, there was something bugging me about it by the end of the concert. I couldn't quite think. I thought, no, something's wrong here. Something's wrong. They cut out I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry. And then I looked at the back of the cover. And bam, I noticed it. Then the collector's note. I was gutted. Absolutely gutted. And throughout, the camera angles were changing. So it took me quite a few years. And only, only recently, because it's, you know... When they released, when they released the deluxe edition of Aloha from Hawaii, containing the rehearsal show and the satellite show, when I saw that advertised, my God, I was buzzing! I was buzzing! You know, I was, I was like a kid at Christmas, right? Pre-ordered it. I actually got the both Six Day Comeback and the Aloha from Hawaii. I got it two months. I got them two months before they actually got released. You see. Because here in the UK, some shops, some shops had things way in advance. 
and I become friends with a really good friend um, I'm not going to say his name but he worked at the Virgin Megastore at the time and I explained to him about this and I said I want to pre-order it and so forth and at the time um, only some places had it for pre-order and he said what, what, what was it called again? So I told him the names and he said, listen, if you come to Cardiff, come and meet me and we'll, and we'll go for a bite to eat and so forth. Okay, no problem. So I was quite... So I, was, I went, to, um, went to Cardiff 2004 when it was released, I think. I think it was 2004 anyway. Yeah, 2004. And um, met up, had a, you know, had a drink, had a, had a meal and we were talking. And he said, oh, by the way... Um, Got me for you here, and he gave me a bag. I opened the bag. My eyes just lit. Excitement was not the word. I was like, "How on earth have you got these? They ain't released yet until uh, it was a month. Um, probably a little bit longer. Probably a month and uh, month and few weeks. And I, I know it was a month at least. And he said, "Well, we when we had our stock in, this was this was in there." And we were told not to put it out until a certain date. I can't remember what date you told me, but... And I said, oh my god. I said, so how did you get these in? Did you, like, seal them or anything? Um, actually, he said, no. We actually had more than uh, we actually should have had. The food was being, like, sent back and... Uh, okay, you shouldn't have done it. But it's 2020 now, do you know what I mean? I don't care if I tell the story. I'm not saying names. Basically, I had them a, a month or so before they uh, was even due for release. So I was ecstatic. I didn't take them out of the bag completely. I just looked at them in the bag. You know, so, uh. so anyway, watched them, fell in love with them, and I, I've, all, I've always loved them, you know. But the, the, again, it, it was re-edited in parts, and I know we, some people who might watch this now think, okay, you're just crazy. You're nuts, you know. Excuse me, but again, growing up, the, the camera angles and the things that you see they stick in your mind, you know. And I, I was still really gutted that I couldn't find the particular version that I had on VHS because the the writing was not there. You know, the startup, the the excitement when you're reading the writing, um, and only recently, only very recently. Um, in fact, this year, to be to be precise, only the beginning of this year, did I manage to buy a sealed version of the VHS from America, containing this cover, the alternate Aloha concert. And this is the version that has all the original camera angles in. And this is a VHS conversion transferred to DVD. But it's a digital transfer. So everything is digital. The hiss has been removed. Um, it's been remastered uh, by yours truly. And it's it's one of it's one of my DVDs in the collection I do watch a lot, so yeah. I'll stop going on now about this. So yeah, Elvis the Alternate Lower Concert. Which is the rehearsal concert done on January 12th, 1973. Okay. Then we come to Aloha from Hawaii. Yes, this is the BMG version. Again, I'm not going to take the disc out because with the 60 come back, I showed you as well that it's. Thing. Right, okay. Now, what I did with this is take out my. Because this is how I grew up watching it, you see. I took out the, the second disc of the Dulux Edition. And they've got this particular version as it was broadcast in it, remastered. Uh, so I just took it out from there. I did have to put it into my editing station because. No more was not featured on the VHS versions and stuff. So I decided to pick a point where it goes into black and comes back in. I decided to edit that and include the performance of No More and then edit back into the concert. So that's that. 
Um, I'm going to also tell you a little bit about the Aloha releases, actually. Um, I did do a spotlight on Aloha, but I'll just go over quickly. Uh, obviously, they released the Deluxe Edition, which is a double disc. But they also released the uh, Special Edition version as well. Um, which is this one in 2004. And they released this with like an Easter egg um, and so forth. But what I uh, found out, I thought, why are they now releasing? And now, the six-day comeback, they've done the same thing. I know I'm jumping to and from, but you'll, I'm sure you'll get the picture. Six-day comeback, when they released that, the, the Deluxe Edition, like I said, the karate part was cut out when he sings, it hurts me. It's cut out. The Special Edition added that back in. So all of the re-edits and everything, which I heard about, I could understand, so I, I did buy the six-day comeback as well. But with your lower, I thought, hang on a minute, the, everything's been released. What are they going to do different to that? Now, the Aloha is very sentimental because it's the very first time I ever saw Elvis or heard Elvis, which was the performance of I'm So Long to Make a Cry, um, which I tell you also about in my uh, Aloha Spotlight. Um, so if you want to see that, go back to the videos and you'll see it. Now... I thought, what are they going to do with it? Because all the footage is there. It's not like the 6 date special. It's not done in sequences and so forth. So how are they going to do it? So out of curiosity, and I just had to buy it anyway, I bought it, and I watched it, and I noticed right away when I saw it. So it's the re-edited version, like the Deluxe, but if you look at all the VHS releases and so forth of Aloha, Focus on when he um, introduces his band members and he goes to introduce the Sweet Inspirations. He goes to introduce the Sweet Inspirations and all of a sudden, pay attention to how he looks and the things around his neck. It switches from there to the... Um, switches from the satellite show to the rehearsal show. And then, all of a sudden, it switches back to the satellite show. In the special edition, it doesn't switch. It stays as the satellite show. So I, I've always, I, I still wonder, even now when I think about it, I think, why didn't, why didn't they, you know, what, why did it switch? You know, what was the reason for it? Because there was clearly nothing wrong with the footage. So maybe, obviously it was messed up in the editing department, but there have been so many releases of the uh, Aloha show, surely it could have been rectified beforehand. But there we go. That's the way it is, isn't it? Pardon the pun. So yeah, that's that. So yeah, that's, that's Aloha from Hawaii, <laughs> PMG. Okay, I'm going to show you another release of Aloha from Hawaii, which i got to say is the most strangest, craziest versions of Aloha that I've ever seen in my life. And even now when I watch it, I still find it strange. This is the 40th anniversary edition. This was quite expensive, actually. Um because I had done it on a pre-order because at the time I actually thought I, I wouldn't have been able to get hold of it and at the time it wasn't looking very good that you could get hold of it in the UK so I eventually ordered it um, that's my backup disc the original is in the pouch and it comes with a booklet which I've kept in here so if I take that booklet out that's the uh, inside there I haven't got many DVDs now to show you after this, funny enough. Okay, so there's the first page. And again, I do show this in the Aloha Spotlight. So again, if you want to see the Aloha and know more information about it and so forth, please go to that video. So this is the 40th anniversary. Now, the screening on this, they've done a special re-edited version and a special screening of it in Honolulu on uh, January 14th, 2013 at um, the Neil S. Bla Bladesdale Arena, Honolulu, Hawaii. They've done a special screening of it there. And uh, all I can say is, please, if you haven't got it and you can find it, get it. Um, I'm not sure if it's been uploaded onto YouTube. But the great thing about it is you've got good camera angles that you didn't see before. You've got um, 
Um, obviously, I knew that I knew about the Japan version as well because they got again great alternative angles that you don't see. In fact, you get to see him after when he puts the scarf on to love me and everything. Um, but officially, you got different angles on here that you don't see anywhere else. Um, there's bubbles on the screen in parts, different transitions throughout the songs. You start off with like different screens, then you see like a multiple of screens everywhere. It's it's just crazy. Even I want to watch it, it still is like, what? So yeah, I would highly recommend it if you're an Aloha fan. If you just, somebody who just likes the Aloha concert and ain't bothered about it, then just get the standard version, Deluxe Edition. But this is an awesome DVD and I'm glad I got it. Um, okay, so now we can, again, further down. I haven't got many DVDs to show you now. But, um... This is another one. Now, this is placed in here, in this section, because it was going to be um, a documentary movie that Elvis was going to make himself. In 1974, he was going to do this. This is Gladiators. This is the, the 1974 Elvis Karate Legacy Project. Never before seen raw footage of Elvis's passion for karate. And my wife Kelly bought me this. In fact, she bought me a few of the DVDs, funny enough. Um, but this one I know was a little bit expensive, and she got it me, I think it was either Christmas or her birthday. And being very excited when she got me this because um, I know that I knew that at the time that I couldn't afford it, and we had long got together. Um, I think it was either for, I think it was actually my second Christmas or second year with her uh, when we were together. And um, she's not a big Elvis fan, my wife isn't, but she supports me in what I do and what I collect and what I'm into. She's an absolute diamond, my wife is. I love my wife to bits. Uh, so there's the disc. Now I haven't copied this. This is my original disc in here. Even the tag I've kept on it, look, you see. Um, it comes with a book. It's sad, because obviously this is something Elvis was really passionate about, and it's gutting that it was never finished. It would have been interesting to see what it would have been like if he had finished it, you know, and it was all edited properly and so forth. But because of what year it was, it was after the Aloha. Um, it's in that section. It's, uh, to me, it's a special now. It's not actually a movie, it's a, it's a special. So, again, that's why it's there. And again, it's in sequence because obviously it was before he passed. Great information in here, great photographs. Also with it as well came these postcards. Just normal standard postcards. Some cool photographs on. Now I'm told that I mean I'm told this is still getting ready to get old of. I mean I don't know. I mean, I've not really searched for it since I had it. Uh, somebody did say to me once they paid uh, quite a lot for it, and I know when they told me the figure, I know that um, this one didn't cost anywhere near that. But I, it was in... Um, somebody paid over £100 for it. Um, and I know there's a lot of, like, bootlegs going around of this DVD. Um, I think there's something different. I think there's one called New Gladiators. I think. So yeah, New. This that's Gladiators. A great DVD to own. Uh, a lot of bonus material on it as well because you got the original raw footage of Elvis Karate. So it has been edited and uh, you got the actual raw entire footage. So that's brilliant. Okay, so now DVD collecting. I've collected over the years so many DVDs. Um, it's just crazy. A lot of bootleg concert DVDs with different covers, different titles, but the footage is the same. Some of it is a little better than others. So from like 2006 right up to the present day that I still collect um, audience recordings uh, that have been filmed and so forth. But I hate DVDs and concerts where he starts singing a song and all of a sudden it'll jump from one song to another song or maybe you'll start singing the song 
and they'll jump from the beginning to the end of the song. You know, and I, I hate it. I, I just can't concentrate. You know, it's great to see the suits, don't get me wrong. Some of the quality, the, the quality varies. Some is really good. Some is pristine. Some is fantastic. Some is really boring. Some is really dull. Some is really too far away. Some is really grindy. And some is just downright rubbish. But there we go. So what I've done, I have compiled, me and a friend of mine are, are, were doing something. And I designed a cover. And I liked it very much. So what I did was I did this cover for myself as well to put on my main shelf and I created this. This is Elvis The Lost Performances Caught on Camera 1969 to 1976. And um, this contains songs which are full songs only. Um, some of the songs, uh, for instance, Poe Saladani, for instance, there's a part where it like, misses an instrumental. I don't mind that. You know, I really don't. As long as the songs are basically complete. Um, so I compile that together myself. And the footage on year, filmed by fans, but these are taken from DVDs that I've had over the years that I've gone through and I've just pulled sections from. So, yeah, that's... Um, Lost Performances, Caught on Camera, 1969-1976. And then here's another great release then for 76. This was, I think this should have been professionally filmed because this is a great concert. This is the Final Countdown to Midnight DVD. I have got the CD as well, but uh, this is my backup of the DVD. Uh, there are a few colours created for this, which I think uh, okay-ish, I guess. But I created this for myself. Done the description, done the songs. Uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh, nineteen seventy-six, New Year's Eve. Uh, done my backdraft. This is brilliant. This is the quality is absolutely amazing. The sound is amazing, um, and it's a full concert. The songs are basically complete all the way through. I I, I love it. And he's wearing that suit as well, so even better. So that's final countdown to midnight. Final countdown to midnight, 1976. Elvis, Pittsburgh, New Year's Eve. Battery decided to uh, to give over, even though I've got it uh, plugged in. My problems with the memory card. Anyway, okay. So the last DVD I showed you was the final countdown to midnight. Now I'm gonna move on to the last three DVDs. And um, i got to say that in 1977, as I'm sure you, you're all aware, everyone's aware, Elvis uh, decided to let CBS film two concerts. And those two concerts were, for a, were basically going to be edited down. Oh, fuck's sake. Uh, sake. Okay, so the last DVD I showed you was the final countdown to midnight. I do apologise about the blip. The uh, memory card and the uh, camera went a bit funny. Okay, so we come now to 1977, and I've got three DVDs to show you. In 1977. As we all know, Elvis sadly passed away on August 16th. Now, many, many years ago, there was a box set released called Elvis 77 and the Final Curtain. It's a very rare box set. Uh, not, well, I wouldn't say it's very rare, but if you get it, it's, uh, it can be very, very expensive. I paid £358 for this set, and uh, it was that was for brand new and sealed. And I was quite lucky. Some of us class it as the holy grail of box sets. It contains the very last two concerts filmed um, by CBS, including the TV special, including the 8mm footage as well that was uh, filmed by fans in the audience. Now if you want more information about that box set, you can either Google it or go back to my videos here on YouTube 
and look for my box sets video where I show you the box sets because I have the original box set of Elvis 77 The Final Curtain. I take it out, I show you the book, I show you the discs. It's a massive box set and it is heavy. So I'm not going to take it out now to show you, but if you would like to see it, go right ahead and check out the box sets video. Um, what I did decide to do, however, I decided to back up, as, as you know, all my original DVDs. When it came to the, uh, the two concerts filmed, I decided to coincide with the soundtrack, which was Elvis in concert. And I decided to, because the original TV special, that's what it was called, Elvis in concert. The actual TV special was only broadcast uh, a few occasions on TV in the US and I think it was once or twice here in the UK. I decided when it came to backing up the DVDs I would create this. This is a three DVD set Elvis in concert and it's become known over the years as the CBS TV special and like the soundtrack it's got a little blue thing there so I decided to add it to the DVD. The back uh, use the spine, I was in concert, and use the back, which again, this picture was featured on the back of the album cover. The the writing there was in blue, so I decided to kind of done a description there I did, and then the like for instance the CBS special I was in concert is there with the track list in, and then the two concerts that were filmed by CBS was put by there underneath, and I done a little copyright and that and the barcode. And inside was, um, it was a gatefold inside the original LP. So I decided, now, this material on the DVD case is a little bit, like, sort of, I don't know. You can't see it tidy, tidy anyway. This is actually in colour. The pictures are in colour. It's just because of the material of the uh, the DVD case. It's like frosted, that's the word I'm looking at, like, like frosted kind of glass type thing. But uh, that's what it is, okay? They are in colour. So, you got the, the DVDs there. Okay? Now, the, f the concerts were recorded and filmed by CBS. The one was in Omaha, Nebraska, June 19th, 1977. The other one was in Rapid City, South Dakota, um, June 21st, 1977. And then, doing everything then, Elvis sadly passed. By that point, I think it was already edited, ready to show the CBS special. Now, not all the performances in the two concerts were shown and used in the CBS special. Unchained Melody was not used in the final CBS special, um, which was crazy because it, it, it is an, an absolute breathtaking performance. Um, Unchained Melody the performance, however, have been shown in various documentaries throughout the years. The great performances, I think, was my earliest memory of seeing that. Now, I don't always watch this because it's very really hard to watch. Elvis, I think by 1977 he was a little, little burned out. And but he still performed, he still performed his heart out. When I watch this, I see a man who gave everything to his world, to the world, everything to his fans, everything that he had in him, he gave. Um, and I really feel for him, and you can, you can tell a lot by looking into someone's eyes, and, you know, looking into Elvis's eyes many times throughout his career, throughout his life, you can tell this, you know, he switched on upstairs, and throughout this one, you know, there's that emptiness, there's that loneliness. I mean, Elvis once said that you can get lonely right in the middle of a crowd, and um, you know, looking into his eyes, you can you can tell a lot, you know. But he still gave, he gave his heart to his fans. So that's my CBS, uh, that's Elvis in concept. That's my version. Also in the box set of the 77 Final Curtain, you had the um, the, eight, the Super Super 8 Magic of 77. Now this 
is my version of the backup. Um, I got this offline, this cover. Um, this is a double DVD. My discs there. That's actually how they are in the, um, in the, uh, the box set. For my Elvis in concert, I've done my own designs. Now, it's hard to watch these sometimes because of the era, the year, or what it was. Basically, it was his last concert tour. Now, many people have seen the Elvis in concert footage filmed, and everybody goes on by about that's his last concert. No, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't his last concert. His last concert is on here. June 26 in Indianapolis. And there's some bonus features on this disc as well. But um, it's hard to watch because um, it's been remastered frame by frame. There's very different footage. But it's hard to watch because it's his last. So that's the last tour. Okay, use the last DVD now I'm going to show you for this video. This DVD has actually taken me a few years to put together. Now, when I was a bit younger, I got asked if I had Elvis's funeral on video. And I said, well, I've got clips of it on various videos. But there was never a videotape fully just with, from going from the day he died to the end of the funeral. Now, over the years, I have um, compiled all, all the footage from various releases, various, um, various things. It's, it's hard to talk about because I didn't I didn't know what I wanted to do. I'd seen DVDs of Elvis's funeral from the from the six from August sixteenth to the funeral and everything. The news reports that's where they mainly were was news reports and special reports. Um, what I did do then I did decide to bite the bullet and go ahead and start creating it, going through footage, and I broke my heart. There was times I sat there and I cried because and I still cry even when I watch the last concerts filmed and the last year that's why I don't often watch them and doing this this is Elvis uh, the day Elvis died and the funeral which was added by me the cover this was actually an original VHS release but it was more like of news reports and different things and so forth but me personally um, I had to edit some of the writing and remove some words because of what it is. Because I added the funeral. Use my disc. Um, this goes from the day from the morning Elvis died. They were. I'm not going to go into big detail, but there's footage of the Amblans, uh taking Elvis. Um, from Graceland to the hospital and basically it was caught on camera there was a camera crew beforehand there was some black and white footage shot then they were outside of Graceland and then all of a sudden the camera the, the camera was filming and the ambulance coming down the drive was shot taken taken out and um basically then there was the announcement which which happened but before the main announcement there's an interview with um, Charlie Hodge and Joe Esposito which was filmed I've got a complete interview of that um, there's been segments of it put into various things but I've got the complete thing so i done all the editing all the original news um, reports on that night they were using natural light so it was quite dark at that time um, so there's various people going into Graceland and so forth see the family and stuff um, and news crew did stay there and um, did, did some interviews and during that period there was a part where um, 
they say about Elvis, Dubrin, early hours of the 16th, go coming back from the dentist, and um, he gave away, and there's that, there's that famous picture now, which is the last picture taken, early hours of the 16th of August, when Elvis is going back into Graceland. Um, I actually got that, and I put that on the screen as they were talking about it. I edited that in, put some information about that, faded it out back into the interviews and the news reports. Then it goes to the following day where um, he was, they were bringing Elvis's, um, bringing Elvis's body back to, to Graceland for the, um, for the viewing. Um, so you got the footage of the car leaving the funeral parlour, going to Graceland, and then you got, um, You got people going in. Um, you got everybody around. You got all the, like the the cars and the fans, and you got the ride going to the uh, back to Graceland. Um, I've got that footage. So what I did was I accumulated that, and I put um, two songs. I included some songs doing the um, DVD, doing the footage, two tribute songs, and then it fades out. Then and I did I. It, this this was a very hard and difficult DVD project to put together. I, a part of me didn't want to do it, but then a part of me thought, well, it's a day in history. I mean, I wasn't around in 77. I wasn't born till 87. But this was a, a day in history that, that shook the world, you know. And, and the food, or the whole lot, everything, the whole world shook. And the world lost probably the greatest... One of the greatest entertainers, uh, one of the greatest human beings who ever walked this earth. So, I didn't know how I was going to do it, I didn't know what I was going to do. So, coming from when when people were going to, like, the view, to view the body, when they let people view, view Elvis, um, I put the picture then on the screen, uh, on the DVD of Elvis, the, the one that was shot picture of Elvis in his casket, two different angles, and it fades out then, and it fades to, to the actual funeral, where the cars and everything is coming out of Graceland, and these, the footage I've got is from the original news camera angle, the, new, the news camera team, so you've got all the original sound that was happening there and then, I know that there is footage of that on YouTube, but there's music and stuff playing over it, I've actually kept the original you hear what's being said, everything, um, and leading right up to the funeral, the funeral possession, and um, you know all the fans, the way they were taking Elvis into the uh, mausoleum, and then it come then as well with everybody coming out. Um, and I done I done some editing there where I ended it and everything. But I kept everything original, everything leading up, everything in, in order. It took some doing and it took some years to decide what to do, whether I want to do it or not. But it's done. So that's the um that's the last DVD basically I'm gonna be showing you today. I do apologize, it's just a very it's hard to talk about. So that's where I'm gonna leave it today. Um, okay, so on, on the up, on the upturns, turn that up, turn that around a minute. On the upturn, the, the next uh, DVD, uh, the next video that I'm going to show you of my DVDs will be containing like uh, TV specials that was done from after his death straight up now to present day. Um, I don't know if it'll be another two or three videos actually after this. Um, just depends on how I how I do things. Um, but it'll you'll have the the, do, uh, the specials and documentaries. You'll have the tributes, uh, like tribute shows that were done, um, and you'll have the, the the bio movies, and then you'll have the the film fantasy movies. Okay, so um, again, no negative comments. If you're gonna leave a negative comment, it'll be removed, and you will be blocked as a user. So you'll be able to see my videos, but you just won't be able to comment. Um, I don't have any negativity. I'm sorry on the channel. So that's the way I keep it. I keep it dignified and everything. So, um, 
I hope you've learned something and I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you well hope to see you soon okay as I said I'm not gonna say when my next video is going to be uploaded but it will be soon so obviously I've done the first video now on the DVDs second video will commence all right so um, it should be in a few days okay so you take it easy and uh, God bless you all and thank you again to all my subscribers take care